Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are very excitingly finally going to take a look at what my 2023 reading journal looks like. You wanna come up? You wanna come up? Yeah. Diego wants to be a part of it. Okay, so before we jump into what my spreads look like exactly, let me just explain what I'm using exactly for my reading journal. This is a standard size traveler's notebook in brown. I've been using this for the past two years. And like I've said many times in previous videos, I really don't see this changing very much. As you can see, she's gone through some wear and tear, but we love how it looks. The patina is beautiful. And it's just been so nice to have this format for my reading journal because it is so portable, so easy to fill out spreads. And yeah, I am super excited to share with you guys what is on the inside of this reading journal. So without further ado, let's get into what my spreads look like. Alrighty, so in general, the setup of my traveler's notebook in terms of like what the inserts are is not too terribly different than what it's been historically, but I'll just go over it really quickly before I jump into the specific spreads that I've made for my reading journal. We start with a craft folder and I keep all of the receipts from my library in this front folder. We have a grid insert that will be my reading log and we'll go over the spreads in a second. I have another craft folder just because I kind of like how it gives the journals a little more body rather than being soft cover journals on the inside of a traveler's notebook it makes it a lot easier to write in and then this is just a craft notebook insert on the inside of this craft folder i won't be going over what's in this craft insert too much but it is my creative reading journal as i talked about in my techo kaigi and i'm just filling this out with fun bookish related creative journaling spreads and hopefully I will continue to fill this out for the rest of the year. I have really been enjoying it so far. I started this in September and it's been a really great way to just make some fun little spreads related to all of my reading. Have it all in one place is really nice as well. So flipping back to the grid insert, this is the one that I will be using most often when it comes to my reading. I've got a little book catapult sticker. This is a local indie bookstore that I love. It's been a while since I've been there, but I'm trying to stay good on my book buying ban. Yeah, and I just picked up a sticker and I stuck it on the front because I really like how it looks. I chose a super simple title page thing for this insert, just using a really cute sticker. The general sort of theme that I had in mind for this reading journals uh, is that just to go with this pretty little blue scheme, but that, as you will see in a second, very quickly fell apart. So a new thing that I've been doing with all of my journals and Traveler's Notebook inserts recently is doing a table of contents. I don't really have any rhyme or reason for it. I don't generally actually use the table of contents to be like, oh, I need to go to this page to get to this page and blah, blah, blah. Nah, it's just more of an aesthetic thing. I really like how tables of contents look. And so I decided to add them to all of my journals and it's just another fun step in my journaling process that I've added. The first spread that I have here is my 2023 reading goals. So da -da -da -da, this is my announcement of my 2023 reading goals. I want to read 135 books next year. I generally read about 150 books a year and that's been the trend for the past three or four years-ish. So I feel pretty confident in being able to make this goal. I want to read 10 classics. I used to be a huge classics girly and I've got a stack of classics on my TBR shelf that have been collecting dust. So I'm hoping to return to them, whether that's via audiobook or reading them physically and annotating them again. And then uh, this one's, <laughs> this one's interesting. We'll see how well I stick to this one. But the last goal that I have is to read five physical books that I own and then I can buy one book. I tried this last year where I read 10 and then I bought one, but I not only started cheating by reading non-physical books that I didn't own and then buying physical copies of those books, but I just at some point totally left that in the dust and was just buying books indiscriminately. So this one's tentative. I'm not super confident about this one, but I'm putting it out there and hopefully maybe this year I can stick to it. 
This next spread is my reading overview spread. This is inspired by Kath at The Last Reader. I will link her blog and also her YouTube channel with the video of this reading overview spread in the description. I really, really loved how she breaks down her reading each month, not only in terms of like, was it a reread, was it a physical read, was it an audiobook, but how many books were, for example, hardcovers versus paperbacks, or how many were of these different genres. So I think this will be a really fun thing to do throughout the year, just to keep track of all my reading. I am not the biggest monthly reader, like I don't track my reads monthly, but I think this will just be generally fun to fill out as the year goes on. The next spread is another spread inspired by Kath, and that is this 2023 reading in pixel spread. So for each day of the year, I will fill in the box with one of these colors, signifying the format in which I read a book that day. I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do for those days where I read multiple different formats quite yet. I'm hoping that this will be another fun way to track my reading throughout the year, and I hope to just at the very least have some fun with it. Again, I know I just said that I'm not huge on monthly statistics, uh, but I did want to make a sort of wrap up spread where I can just jot down one or two quick things about the month like, oh hey, I read 14 books this month, or hey, I read a bunch of fantasy novels this month, or oh hey, I read a bunch of long books this month, so if my numbers look small in terms of overall reading. I read a lot of pages, so there's a difference. I haven't fully thought out this page, and again, it was kind of just like, oh, I wanted to use some calligraphy and set up another spread in my reading journal. I'm actually, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it and looking at this, I might turn this into my buddy read spread. So Justine from Justine Cape and Veronica from Wilder Moonlights on Instagram, also Moon and Coffee Books on her blog. I will link them both down below. We try to do a monthly buddy read and uh, we, we kind of fell apart with that last year just because of reading slumps in life and everything getting in the way, but it looks like we're starting it up again. So now that we're reviving our little monthly book club, I might change this to say, book club buddy reads. Okay, well, I'll let you guys know if that changes. Okay, and this next spread is not labeled, but I know in my heart <laughs> that it's my anticipated releases spread. So I've just laid out the 12 months and started writing down titles and authors of books that will release in these months throughout the year. Now, if you're reading this and you're thinking to yourself, hey Mari, most of these books have actually already been released. Yes, you are absolutely correct. Most of these books have been released already in the year of 2022. However, the paperbacks have not gotten released. So a lot of these, in fact, I believe most of these are going to actually be the release dates for the paperback copies. As you know, I am a huge fan of paperbacks versus hardbacks. It's just a much more comfortable reading experience for me. I won't go into it too much, it doesn't really matter. It just serves to explain why I have so many paperback releases on my spread. I just do prefer the paperback, so I tend to wait for the paperbacks to be released. I'm slowly filling this out, finding all of the books that I am anticipating their release in 2023. Quarter four is not really filled out currently because not a lot of titles have been announced or at least like no hard dates for titles have been announced. So that will get filled out as the year goes on. Okay, this next spread on the left here is my 2023 book of the month picks spread. So every single month, if I make a book of the month pick, I will write down the title and the author in the corresponding month. I have not picked a book of the month in a couple of months just because I haven't really liked any of the titles that have been offered. We'll see how that goes for this spread and what I'll do when I don't pick a book. Yeah, hopefully they start releasing some, some titles that I'm actually interested in and I can fill this spread out. And then this one is my personal favorite spread in terms of appearance. I don't know, I don't know what was with me that day. It just, I just went off with this spread. I love how it turned out. So this is my books to reread spread. It's just a list of books that I own already that I've read either in different formats or I've just 
I loved so much and I need to reread it. I just went through my shelves and anytime a title stood out to me and I thought to myself, gosh, I really need to reread it, I wrote it down. So I am excited. I, I am putting it out there that 2023 is the year of rereading. So hopefully I will be able to knock some of these books out in terms of rereads next year. All right, and then this is my 2023 favorite reads spread. This is a bracket style spread that's inspired by um, Plant Based Bride. She also does a bracket style spread to determine her favorite read of the year. Now, the thing about brackets is that they have to be fair without having to worry about things like seeds and whatnot. You have to have multiples of two and it has to be exponential to I don't know how to explain it even though I love math um, so it has to be like either 2 4 16 that kind of thing or else it gets kind of uneven and unfair so I chose 16 I will write down 16 of my favorite books on the outside here and then play a fun little bracket game to decide my favorite book of the year at the very end of the year not sure how I feel about this spread and how I'm going about choosing my favorite reads, uh, but it was fun to set up and hopefully I have fun with it. We'll see. The next few pages are going to be my library book tracker spreads. So this is me just writing down the titles and authors of the books that I check out from the library. I've been using the library a lot more this year, mostly because I live quite close to the library. So it's very easy for me to check out books. And it's honestly saved me a lot of money and a lot of time when it comes to looking for books to read. So I've just set up four quick pages of this spread. I used a Tombow to highlight every other line just so there's a little bit of breakup of the monotony of the white pages and I think it looks quite nice and quite clean and I'm excited to fill this spread out. And then finally my last spread that I set up in this reading journal is my 2023 running reading log. This is something that I started last year instead of doing monthly reading spreads, writing down what books I read within a month, I literally just write down books in one long list regardless of when I read it. I have simplified this even more than I did last year. So last year I had title, author, number of pages, my rating on my personal rating scale, and then two columns for start and finish dates. I have gone, <laughs> I have done away with most of those things and now I just have title, author, and my rating for it. It's super simple, super easy. It's a lot less work for me in terms of what I need to keep track of and also I didn't really use any of the other information that I was writing down besides title author and rating when I was writing down information last year so I kind of reflected on that and was like hey let's you know, save some time save some brain space and not write down all that extra mumbo jumbo so I set up I think five pages of the spread Doing the same thing with a Tombow marker on every other lines just to break up the monotony. And I left the rest of the journal blank in case I do need to make more pages. I don't see myself needing more pages. I needed five full pages for 2022 and I've read about 160 books this year. So uh, I don't foresee myself needing more than five pages, but just in case I have left the rest of the notebook empty. So yeah, that is it for my 2023 reading journal. That's what it looks like on the inside and hopefully I will be able to show you guys more of what it looks like when I've filled it out. Um, I'm super excited. I really love a lot of the spreads that I've made and I'm excited to fill them out and I'm hoping that I keep up with filling out those spreads throughout the year. Um, I know a lot of us kind of fall off fall off the bandwagon when it comes to our spreads that we set up at the beginning of the year. So. Here's to hoping that you and I stick to our goals and also stick to filling out all of the fun spreads that we've set up in our reading journals. Let me know down in the comments what you're using for your reading journals or how you track your reading in general, if it's a spreadsheet or if you just use like 
the back of a receipt or something. I don't know. I love hearing all the different ways that people track their reading. I also love getting inspiration from you guys. So yeah, please let me know what you're using in 2023 to track your reading. Otherwise, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much as always for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a good rest of your day and a good rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye. You wanna say bye bye to the camera? Are you a star? Are you over the hero track? Duh. Okay, buddy, I gotta get up. Get up. Good boy. Deep blue.